happens to be the Netherlands and Turkaye. I still can't believe people are calling it that. I will not call it that anymore this show. Uh, I refuse. But the Dutch, what a battle. That last game, they kicked the absolute shit out of Romania. Busted them up 3-0, to zero, start to finish, never looked back. Wow, that was kind of the Dutch team that I remember from the Olympics and the World Cup. All of a sudden, you know, they come out of nowhere. Uh, previously, they lose to Austria 3-2, to two, a high-scoring affair. They tie France 0-0, and they beat Poland 2-1 to uh, to kind of advance to this position. But again, that big battle out there, taking care of Romania. On the other side with Turkey, Austria, huge favorites, the last battle around there. Everybody I know and then some was betting on Austria. Tur- Turkey didn't care. Nobody told them they were supposed to lose that game. Big 2-1 to one victory. They handled the Czech Republic 2-1, to one, but... Two red cards for the Czech Republic. I don't know if Turkey's path to victory is as clear as we've talked about. They did lose to that Portugal team that I'm just not fond of, but they did beat the shit out of Georgia. So in terms of anything being up for grabs, we talked about game number one in Spain, Germany, Portugal and France, number two, England and Switzerland. But now we've got this Netherlands team. And uh, Lou, last game in the quarters, Netherlands and Turkey. Have the Dutch woken up from their slumber, or is Turkey out there uh, looking to go out and get the underdog in this tournament? Cinderella, time to turn to a pumpkin or not? What say you? Well, I am one of those people that had Austria uh, yeah, in that too. game. <laughs> it's really interesting because the Turkey side's interesting to cap because now they get back their captain, Kalhana Glue, but they just they have two midfielders out now on suspension. So I wonder if it just doesn't matter for this team. Every once in a while, you get one of these teams where it's just next guy up. And and I wonder, they seem to be a well-oiled unit. They love pushing forward. I'm not convinced of their defense and at all. Austria, I mean, look, Austria is very unlucky that they only got one goal. That save at the end was, that's a save of the tournament. I don't really care what happens going forward. That's a bigger save than any of the penalty kick saves I saw. That was the game. I, Austria's a little unlucky, and then the field got absolutely terrible. You saw people slipping near the end, but it was just so fun. I've never had more fun losing a bet than at least watching the last 15 minutes of that game. It was tremendous, especially after some of the duds we've had this last couple of days. It was nice to see an exciting game. Netherlands, tons of talent offensively. Depay looks like he's in form with the set pieces, not scoring as much, but becoming – Really, his set pieces have been excellent. His delivery has been excellent. Gakpo is in tremendous shape. But their goalkeeper, I, I'm, I have really have some reservations about the back line and the goalie of Netherlands. He's young. He's untested. Turkey's good on counters. I, I think this is your craziest high-scoring game of the week. I gave out a bet that I liked. I'm just going to go for the super plus money here on a crazy flyer. I like it. And that I think Turkey's team total of one and a half at plus 280, plus 300 range is insanity. I think they could score two and still get blown out. I think Netherlands could run up the score on them. That's conceivable here. But I don't know how Turkey doesn't score. And the only way that this team total at least looks completely dead is a red card. Or if Turkey's winning one nothing and parking the bus. And I that's such a low percentage outcome here with these two teams. So I like goals, like Steve Gregory said. But I want the big plus money on this one. I want to end my – you ask me how I want to get paid. This is how I want to fucking get paid. I want yeah. Turkey to score two goals at 3-1 to one odds. Uh, I don't want to pick a side here, man. I'm going to kind of – how do you not root for Turkey? If you don't have a side, if you're a neutral, let's get a story, man. Hey, man, one of these four teams, England, Switzerland, Turkey, the Netherlands, is going to be in the final. Give me some chaos, man. Give me Switzerland, Turkey in the semis, man. Let's get some (laughs) chaos here. Mm -hmm. That would indeed be chaos. The books wouldn't know what to do with themselves. When you look at this thing on on, uh, the surface level right now, big dogs are Turkey here at plus 450. So chaos indeed. I mean, you're looking at draw no bet for Turkey at plus 300. Turkey to advance is plus 260. Dan, do we see chaos? How does this one break down in your opinion? Yeah, so, you know, the, in terms of a gap in levels, this is the biggest gap. There's 35 spots in the world rankings between these two teams. It's the biggest gap. 
between any matchup in these quarterfinals. And I, like I said, I think it's going to be a goal fest as well. I agree with Lou. Um, you know, the over two and a half is is minus 141 for over two and a half in this game. So, you know, obviously they're expecting Turkey to score. Um, I just think that this game is just going to be goals. I love uh, Big Show brought it up in the chat uh, with the golden boot. My main play for this game is Cody Gapko goal or assist at plus 110. He's had three goals so far in the tournament. He's assisted once, so he's always involved. I don't see him coming off either, which when you take these markets, you don't want to um, – you try and you want to avoid players that are going to get pulled out of that rotation because you want to maximize every minute of that game. So I think Cody Gapko, it covers him setting up something for Depay. Um, you know, I just love that. Um, I also like the over corners in this game. In in all of Turkey's games, um, they're averaging uh, 6.2 corners a game, and we've got the Netherlands averaging 6.8. But I, I just see this pace just really being pushed on both ends, and I can see there being, you know, the over 9.5, um, I got that at minus 125. But if you wanted to be a bit sneaky with it, you could maybe bump that up to 10 and a half, get the alternate corners um, for the plus money. Uh, but yeah, those are my main my main looks in those games. Uh, another big key thing to keep in mind is that the last couple times these teams have played each other, it's been really up and down. Um, I, I don't really like going too deep into, into head-to-heads in international games because, you know there can sometimes be years between like there was nine years, nine years from a game in 2015 where Turkey won three nil. Um, it's just too far away for me, but in 2021 in the UEFA uh, nations league, Turkey beat them four two um, away as well. But then following that game in the Netherlands beat them six one. So it's like, you can't really, you know, take those too much for granted. This is a biggest stage. I feel, I feel like that UEFA Nations League was a bit of a joke, to be honest, um, when they did it. Uh, but, yeah, I, I just see Cody Gapko, goal or assist here at, at plus 110. Um, yeah, and that's how I'll be moving on that game. I like it. We got a little player prop action out there, Gaucho. I know you're a guy that likes to get into the action here. Player props, sides, totals, draws, you name it. But Netherlands and Turkey, how are you getting paid in this game? Yeah, we're all aligning real well here. This this one does scream goals. I split a unit between the both teams to score on the one hand and the over two and a half on the other. Uh, I think I think the really nice prices for a game like this. Um, Dan's Dan's I think completely on track with uh, Gakpo to score assist. Again, really nice price there, and uh, you know to go along with Gakpo, uh, I did take Gakpo Golden Boot at five to one. He's already in the running. And uh, like we've been talking, nice. this this one screams goals. He could easily have one or two. Who knows? If they get through, he he might be the leader at that point. And uh, you know, lose look is uh, is super creative there. Plus three hundred. I, I think I think Netherlands is vulnerable. They're clearly the better side, but it doesn't mean that they can't get scored on, and go on to win the game. You know, three two, four two. Who knows? If anybody wanted to ladder this game, I wouldn't talk them off that. And, um, you know, corners. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad uh, Dan brought that up. Uh, Netherlands had 10 corners in the first half of their last game against Romania. It's insane. Um, if they ever should go down, you know, if Turkey goes and uh, slots one in in the first minute, as they did in their last fixture, immediately go to that Netherlands, uh, you know, first half over corners and maybe maybe full game over corners because they're going to be attacking like crazy after that. And they're a team that – uh. They generate a lot. They'll they'll get it out to the out to the slot, out to the corner, and start banging them in. And you'll get plenty of deflections. They take a ton of ton of shots, so you'll see plenty of deflections off of that. Um, yeah, th- these might not be for my money the best teams in the tournament, but this game just screams just fun, fun, fun. It's it's gonna be a it's gonna be one to watch. It's gonna be up and down, back and forth. Um, Got to favor Netherlands, but I'm not gonna mess around with the side because I want to root for Turkey. And, uh, I, yeah, I, I hope they, they find a way to somehow pull this off. Um, yeah, look for an action-packed one here. 
Can I give the same game bet that we all talked about? This is just a combination of what all three of us said. Give away, my guy. Let's go. We're trying to get this cash here. I'm going to a million percent have to probably play this. I'm going to have to see what I can do for. uh, I might. I might have to do it separately with goal and assist for Gakpo, but Cody Gakpo to score over ten and a half corners, over three and a half goals, and over one and a half goals by Turkey is plus twenty two hundred. Oof. And I don't hate this, and I'm yeah. going to bet it probably uh, now. Yeah. Wow. Like a big same game parlay. I mean, if you if you know anything about my content, I don't get excited for a plus one fifty bet. I get out of bed for a plus twenty two hundred bet. <laughs> that'll get me. That'll get me out of bed. I like it. That'll, that'll get you out of anything. I think. <laughs> that'll get me out of bed. He won't hit the snooze button for plus 150, but at plus 2200, he's running laps around the house, ready to go. I love it. I love the opportunity. You guys talked about this one. It sounds like the makings of a real fun battle and a nice way to kind of close things off. We kind of, the way these matchups kind of start here, it's a lot of uncertainty and it's a funnel that just kind of works into something that should be a nice little uh, fireworks display to close it off. The fact that you guys think there's going to be goals, the fact that you kind of think, hey, Turkey can go out there and make something happen led me to some of these spots that I want to get involved with here. I do think this is kind of coin flippy as far as the, uh, at least the opening in this game, but how about this one guys? Hear me out. Why can't Turkey come out there and shock the world early? And then the Dutch wake up and try to figure shit out. Turkey to score the first goals around two to one plus 200, but the Netherlands to win from behind at plus 600 is a nice little prop bet that I want to get involved with there. I can see Turkey coming out. It's going to be fun. It's just a little kind of flyer bet out there, but it's six to one. Why not get these guys to come back from behind out there? Turkey kind of smacks him in the mouth early. You know, a goal in the first 30 minutes is priced around plus 200 as well. So opportunities galore to see some goals. If you like those opportunities, why not take the shot? Obviously, we've got four games. That'll be the fourth of the battles in these quarters. But um, hey, Mike, not? Turkey scored like 30 seconds last game. So, right. I mean, that's very, very live. First set oh. piece scored. So why not? You know, and, and then you look at the two to one at the, the Turkey to score first. I just think these guys can come out sharp. They come out fast. They come out fire. And it's a huge game for both these teams. But look, the Dutch have got the experience. They're not going to panic. They're going to kind of go out there and play some chess. They're going to want to see how things kind of unfold. And that's where I think Turkey can kind of slap them in the face with the open palm. Just give them a little whack. And then uh, and then that kind of slaps them to reality and they go out there and they fire. So take a little fire on that one there. I love the same game parlay. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, can't wait to see what this game's going to look like. We got four big games. Lots of fun here starting tomorrow at 12 p.m. And uh, lots of fun today, boys. Hey, I'll shoot it around the horn. I don't know if anybody has it. We didn't talk about it in advance, but it is America's birthday. And what do we know about America's birthday? They got a hot dog eating contest. Does anybody have a favorite for the hot dog eating contest? Because I sure do. I'm protesting without Chestnut. I protest the event. (laughs) No Joey Chestnut. Uh, Dan. Down under, do they Joe, eat Joe, hot dogs in a gluttonous pace? Joe, Joey Chestnut is the ambassador for this sport. It's a travesty that he's not competing, and I will not be watching. It's un-American. It's un-Australian to not let him compete. I'm not happy about it, but I'll ride with Mike, whatever he's got. Sub, are you going to eat any hot dogs on the 4th of July? No, I, I am also uh, joining the, the protest. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not one to cross the picket line like some scab. But, uh, yeah, I'll tell. I'll tell. Let's hear it. I will lay it on you, boys. I got the sharp steam report. Can you believe it? They give you steam reports <laughs> on the fucking hot dog eating contest. It's disgusting. But it is five for five. In the last five years, the steam report has been dialed in. Get oh, your pens and pencils. It. God Rick damn it. Gang's ready. He says the 10 unit play on the hot dog eating contest. Look to James Webb. He's priced at plus 145. Eat more hot dogs than anybody else. James Webb at plus 145. Why not go out there? Silent Rob says steamed buns. <laughs> they are steamed buns, I believe, as well. I never should have come on this show because now I'm going <laughs> to bet this stupid thing. And God damn it. We appreciate you guys all rocking with us, man. This is the kind of stuff that uh, we want to do more of collectively. I love the collab. I love getting Lou involved here for the first time. We've seen him in the chat supporting the show. And uh, he's got his own show, you guys. Both Lou on the bottom out there, and we'll give these guys the opportunity to shout out, and Dan Doherty doing their things on YouTube. We had to bring in some of the best soccer minds 
to give you guys these looks to get these books cooked. And uh, it means a ton that all of you guys are rocking with us. So we'll go around the horn. We'll put a bow on the show here. Uh, and we'll start with Lou. Tell them what's going on. Tell them where they can find you. And uh, my guy, thank you for being a part of what we did today. Thanks for having me, man. I had a great time with you guys. I'm still sweating this Lloyd Harris bet. They're in the fifth yeah. set on serve, so I'm losing my mind over this. It's funny that you have the MMA Engine channel on the bottom because actually moving homes next week. Whole new project with my partner, Monk Maddox, and I uh, ramping up not just the MMA content, but doing a lot more on the comedy side. I got some really weird ideas coming up that I don't even want to mention on air. One of them is me watching body cam videos of cops like the legendary Jacob Bird in Arkansas, who just pits fuckers like it's, like it's his job. It's amazing. Uh, the, I, we have a couple new shows debuting Monday, Fight Factor with my guy Dogfather. Tuesday, it's called White Whale. It's the worst bets we've ever made. That will be way more on the fun side. And, uh, and as soon as EPL season starts up, I am bringing back that content, and I would be very interested in working with all three of you guys uh, whatever availability you have, maybe rotating channels. Sure. I am all for doing a lot of EPL content. I love it. It's my favorite thing. 7.30 in the morning on a Saturday. Let's fucking go with bets. <laughs> Hell yeah, Lou. I'm looking forward to it. Make sure you guys follow Lou and everything that he's doing. A lot of fun. Uh, very knowledgeable when it comes to not just footy, but MMA and uh, all things in world of sports. So check our guy Lou out. Make sure you stay tuned for what he's got going on out there as he moves homes. Hopefully he'll update his, uh, you know, YouTube profile so I can get the right link in there the next time. <laughs> and uh, of course, uh, blessed with our guy from down on that. He's got the dingos. He's ready to roll here. That's my bad Australian accent, but I love That's Dan Doherty. Right. And a uh, super knowledgeable guy when it comes to footy action. Popped off. He got a new channel out there, Slate Bets. And he's been rolling live for these Euros. Uh, he's been partnering up Copa action here. The guy's sitting out there all night long, staying up till 5 in the morning to give you guys the best looks. 5 a.m. his time. Dan, tell him what's cooking, my guy. Yeah, um, I just saw Steve uh, Steve Gregory in the chat was just uh, asking, is Depay on the penalties? I went through and had a look at all of uh, the Netherland games, and it looks like um, the two penalty takers they've recently used have been Virgil van Dijk, which is interesting. Um, that was in uh, their qualification game against Greece, um, and that was like a last-minute penalty, which was like, you know, in injury time. So that's probably why he took that, because um, I'm guessing Gapko or some of their other forwards would have been off. But Gatko did take a penalty um, and did get it in against Ireland uh, in the qualification game as well. So if he's on, he'll probably take it. It could be between him and Depay, depending on what sort of dynamic they have in that game. But I just wanted to answer that, uh, Mike, sorry, real quickly before we moved on. Um, but, yeah, if you, uh, I've started up Slate Bets. I'll whack it there. It's in the chat. Uh, we'll be live streaming for the Argentina-Ecuador game for Copa America. So tune in for that one a little bit later i've got to get some beauty sleep uh because it's currently it's 12 30 a.m here right now so i've got to get some beauty sleep but thanks for having me on mike as well uh lou absolute pleasure and sub pleasure as always mm -hmm. jeff if he was here he'd know i'd say the same thing but he's uh he's a busy man so uh but yeah thanks for having me mike i appreciate it Lots of fun. Look for the live stream for the Copas tonight. Maybe we'll all get back together with a cocktail and celebrate all things that are um, South American soccer, I guess, here. But Subhuman Gaucho, my guy, my brother from another mother out there, rocking and rolling. He's given us the outdoor forestry shop, but he was contributing today like he always does, giving you guys ways to get paid. And uh, Subhuman Gaucho, appreciate you coming on. Tell us what's happening, my guy. Yeah, well, this was great, guys. Really glad we did it. It's got me, uh, got me all the more excited for these games. Um, gonna be great. And yeah, we gotta, we gotta do this more often. Um, you know, Luke talked about UPL and, and whatnot coming up here in another uh, what five weeks or so. Uh, maybe it's more like six or seven. But, yeah, a little bit longer. That's all right. Yeah. But uh, but yeah. At any rate, um, yeah, yeah, we gotta do this again. It's been awesome. And uh, I gotta mention it because Dan didn't, but Dan's gonna be going live doing some Copa action. So make sure you subscribe to his channel at Slate Bets. That's going to be a good time. Dan is super sharp, as you all know. So, uh, you know, he's he's one you're going to want to be watching the game with if you can. 
Yeah, we. Yeah. I really like to get out my because it's like an hour before the game. I, I like to go through the lineups. If you jump in the show early, we usually put a few plays on to roll with early. I, I like it as using it a way to get people into the stream. And I'll give out my plays, but if you really want the plays, you got to come and watch live. That's the way to do it. Mm -hmm. Get the watch along going on.